good morning, everyone. Welcome to the First Baptist Church of Hicks edition. We are glad that you are joining us today. If you're joining us on Facebook or on Zoom, we welcome you to this fellowship and worship experience. Uh, truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 As we do every Sunday morning here at First Baptist, we do recite our purpose statement. So if you don't mind just reciting that statement with us, our purpose, our, our purpose, purpose is to share, share the love of Christ, Christ to be, be dedicated, dedicated in service to others, others to be disciplined in giving, giving responsible in stewardship, stewardship, true in worship, faithful in prayer, and passionate in the study of God's word. Amen. Let us pray this morning. God, we thank you once again for allowing us to be here one more time. Lord, we are so grateful for how you have blessed us to be here today. We know, Father God, that it was the touch of your love that woke us up this morning and kept us in our right mind and started us on our way. And we praise you, Father God, that you cared so much about us. We ask right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you would be with us in this worship experience. Holy Spirit, you're always welcome in the place. And we just pray that you would have your way, have your way in the songs that will be sung, yes, prayers that will be prayed, and the word that will be preached. Yes. God, it is always our prayer that somebody who has lost hope might find it. Somebody who's lost courage might be encouraged today. And most of all, that one who has lost might be saved. Oh, God, we can't do it on our own, for we need your help today. And so we ask you to enter, in, enter into this place. Father God, we pray that you would reach those who are joining us on Facebook and Zoom. We pray, God, that whatever their need is, that you would meet it today. It is my prayer, God, that people have come today waiting with expectation for the word that you have provided for them. And it is my prayer, God, always that it will help them in some way. Now be with us, lead God, and direct us in all that we do as we give your name the praise and the glory. It all belongs to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's hear. Amen. I hear you, little one. We have a little one who's in here giving God praise. He's going to help me preach the sermon today. That's right, my man. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand. We're going to come today from John 3, 1 through 16. Of course, that's a familiar passage of scripture to all believers. Uh, but I thought it was appropriate on this day of coming back that we remind ourselves and others about being born again. Amen. John 3. Starting at verse number one, I'm going to read all the way to verse 16, so forgive me for my long reading, but I pray that you'll follow with me. I'm reading from the New King James Version of John chapter 3, verse 1 through 16. I do appreciate all of those who have been praying for me. Uh, as you can tell, I am sounding a whole lot better, getting a whole lot better. Amen. I've been taking an antibiotic for the last few days and trying to take care of of my body and my throat as much as possible. So thank you for your prayers for sure. John 3, starting at verse number 1, the gospel according to John, starting at verse number 1 in chapter 3, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say unto you, Unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. 
If I had told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. From this scriptural text, I just want to use as a simple topic, you must be born again. Amen. You may be seated in God's house today. The grass withers, the flower, of the, fa the flower fades thereof, but the word of the Lord will last forever. Hallelujah. Lord Kenneth Clark, internationally known for his television series Civilization back in the 80s and 90s, lived and died without faith in Jesus Christ. He admitted in his autobiography that while visiting a beautiful church, he had what he believed to be an overwhelming religious experience. He says, my whole being was eradicated by a kind of heavenly joy far more intense than anything I had known before. But the gloom of grace, as he described it, created a problem. If he had allowed himself to be influenced by it, he knew that he would have to change. And his family might think that he had lost his mind. And maybe that intense joy would prove to be only an illusion. So he concluded, I was too deeply embedded in the world to change course. My brothers and sisters, that's a familiar story for so many that are in our society and in our world today, in our communities, even in our families, that they can be impacted emotionally by the word of God being preached, but be overwhelmed by the love that God gives to every man, even in his sin, by grace. And thus, unwilling to make a change in their life that will change their life forever. My brothers and sisters, in the book of 2 Timothy, it declares that there will be perilous times and men will become lovers of their own self, disobedient and covetous. Men will become boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, and without natural affection. And more importantly, they will become lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having only a form of godliness but denying his power. What am I saying? Brothers and sisters, we have entered into a time when men only care about themselves rather than committing their lives to God who gave them life and can give them eternal life if they yet would yield to his love. Not only that, but time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine, we know that there are all kinds of teachings and doctrines out there who, who are trying to bypass Jesus in order to get to heaven. But let me remind you, brothers and sisters, the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. They will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they will turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned to fables. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, as I just stated, so many people are running away from the power of God's word to a lot of false teaching and fables, and they're getting lost and all messed up by all that they are hearing and receiving. If they would only just yield their heart to God, it is in God that they can find perfect peace. It is in God that they can find a joy that cannot be taken away. 
Yes, you may have to go through some hard, difficult times. You may have to endure some trials and tribulations. Oh, but thank God that in Christ I have one who will walk with me and go with me all along the way. And he has fulfilled a promise to us that even while we're living on this earth, he has already made our citizenship in heaven by his blood. I want to know in this house today, is there anyone who believes in Jesus Christ? The power of his blood and resurrection. Another surging belief or religion that is making a foothold in the world is this New Age movement. What is the New Age movement, you might ask? In this movement, man is central. Not God, but man. He is viewed as divine and as co-creator, like we had anything to do with creation. And one representative of this new age movement quoted that this movement is, uh, is like this. I'm only affected by my thoughts. And it is in this belief that salvation comes to all the world. The new age movement has two basic beliefs, evolutionary godhood and global unity. And they believe that man evolves both in body and in spirit and that because of this development, man would leap forward into new spiritual horizons. This evolutionary Godhead means that all mankind will soon see itself as a God, as the Christ principle, and that man's basic nature is good and divine. But that's not what my Bible tells me. My Bible tells me in Psalms 51 that we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. How can I be divine if I'm full of sin? How, how can I be Christ-like when I don't even have a righteousness enough to save myself? This is a dangerous teaching. It's a dangerous teaching and force that is opposing our faith. So much so that it denies needing a savior to save you from your sinful nature and to bribe you with an opportunity to live in eternity because you are divine in nature. Oh, but let me tell you, let me remind you once again that the only way to eternal life and the only way to see God is that you must be born again. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 4. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness, lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Even the scriptures tell us that there will come a time when men will start proclaiming themselves to be God. But lest I keep you too long, let's move to our text today that is before us. If you recall, I just read to you the scripture about Nicodemus who was a priest in the temple. He comes to Jesus by night. And when he comes to Jesus, he asks Jesus a question. What must I do to be born again? Because Jesus had been teaching in the temple and had been performing many miracles, Nicodemus had a little bit of insight to believe that maybe this is the Son of God. And if he was the Son of God, he wanted to make sure that he secured himself in heaven. What must I do to be saved? Rabbi, I know, I know that you are a teacher who's come from God, for no man can do these miracles except God be with him. Jesus in his omniscience and providence replies, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Let me look at this word must. I was in Bible study yesterday, and I started talking about imperative verbs. And when you see an imperative verb, it means that there is no other uh, thing that you can do. You have to do whatever that verb says. You can't half do it. You got to go all the way with it. And in this text, Jesus uses the word must 
which is an imperative, which simply means that there is no other way. Let me say that again. Jesus uses the word must, which is an imperative verb, students, which simply means that there's no other way to be saved except a man be born again. The word born in this statement is defined as regeneration or rebirth. And to put this in simpler terms, you could say that regeneration in this sense is a change from within. If we are to be born again, brothers and sisters, and if we accept Jesus Christ as Lord, there is an inward change that begins to move in us by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And because of this inward change occurring in us, it would change our outward, outward behaviors and attitudes. Secondly, it means when we hear it, uh, this other word, again, we must be born again. In the Greek, there are three definitions for the word again. It means from the beginning, completely and fully. Secondly, it means a repeated act a second time. And thirdly, it means from above. In other words, Jesus tells Nicodemus that in order for him to see the kingdom of God, and in order for you to see the kingdom of God, he must be born again. He needs to be completely and fully a second time born from above. So that's the first thing I want to leave with you today. That if you have that if you want to have eternal life with God, being born again is necessary for salvation. Look at it, John 3 and 3. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Brothers and sisters, I don't care how good you are and how many good deeds you do and how moral you think you are, but the only way to have assurance of being born again is through the blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. There has to be a profession of faith in him to be born again. And being born again is necessary to save us from our sins. There is nothing good in us. Let me repeat that again because I didn't get too many amens. I said, brothers and sisters, there's nothing good in us. And what we need is a savior to save us from the sins that we have committed that has separated us from a holy and righteous God. There is nothing good in us. We are a total mess. I want you right now just to point to yourself and say, I'm a mess. Come on, just admit it, I'm a mess. Even on my best days, I'm still a mess. And I still need the blood of Jesus Christ. to save us. I must remind you that heaven will not be inhabited by everyone. You may think you're going to heaven by doing good without professing Jesus Christ, but let me remind you that Jesus in the day of judgment will look at you and say, who are you basically? You can say all you want. I've cast out devils in thy name. I've done this and that in my name. And Jesus will look at you and say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, because I don't even know you. Because you never profess a hope in Jesus Christ, our Lord. You may have been doing all these great and wonderful things, but it's all for naught if you had not done it with Jesus in your heart. Because brothers and sisters, we say this all the time, only what you do for Christ will last. The Bible reminds us in Romans chapter 3, verse 10, that there's none who are righteous, not even one. Verse 12 goes on to say, all have turned away. They have all together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. But thank God for verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God because it helps us to recognize that we are sinners in need of a Savior. we are to have eternal life, then regeneration, rebirth is necessary. There has to be a willing change in the heart of man towards God and not himself. I said again, there has to be a willing change. 
This change is not going to come by osmosis. There has to be a willingness in you to make a change, to change direction from the world of corruption to the place of incorruption and righteousness through the blood of Jesus Christ. You have to be willing to make that change. We live in a society right now that so many are not willing to make the change for Christ. Oh, they put on a facade. They'll come to church. They'll give some money. They'll say all the right little Christian-y words. But in their heart, they're far from God. Their mouth speaks it, but their heart is far from it. And don't think that Jesus is fooled by that. I think too many of us can go around in this world thinking that we have fooled God without many really making a total commitment to him. But God is not to be mocked. <laughs> For whatsoever man soweth, he shall also reap it. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, with a willingness to make a change, the Bible says, if any man, if he be in Christ, he becomes a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. And so if we are to see God to be born Again, is necessary for salvation. You have to have a willingness to surrender your life to Jesus Christ and allow his spirit to begin to make a change on the inside that will change everything on the outside. You have to be born again, not of the flesh, but of the spirit of God working in you. Secondly, secondly, to be born again is not a physical birth. But again, let me remind you that it is a spiritual birth. Let's, spiritual birth. Let's look at verses 5 through 8. Jesus answered, most assuredly I say unto you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. For that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said this unto you. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. If we're going to be born again, it has to be a spiritual birth. Nicodemus, after hearing Jesus say that he must be born again, was confused by the statement that Jesus, of Jesus and questioned, how, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? Jesus says to Nicodemus, except a man be born by water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Titus 3 and 5 tells us not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to the mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit will come in and transform your life. And what will happen is that you will all be created all over again through the power of the Spirit. It will not be a fleshly birth, but it will be a rebirth in you through the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we see... In chapter 2 of John, water is symbolic of the word of God, which is used for purification. What Jesus is saying here is that the rebirth has nothing to do with things we do in the flesh, because flesh cannot be born again, nor can our flesh bring salvation. But the only way that we can have salvation and be born again, there has to be a washing of our sins away through the power of the Holy Spirit through the preaching and teaching of his word. Again, our rebirth has two sources. It begins with the word of God, which opens the door to the Holy Ghost to complete the change in us. Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace you have been saved, not of works, lest any man should boast. 1 John 5, 1 says that everyone who believes on Jesus Christ is born of God and everyone who loves his father loves his son as well. How can you love only Jesus without loving God the Father? And how can you love God the Father without loving Jesus? You cannot do it. And let me just add this to it. How can you say you love God and you can't even love your brothers in the flesh? Be not conformed to this world. Romans 12, 1 tells us, 12, 2 tells us. But be transformed. How? 
by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. There has to be an inside change, an inward change in your thinking that causes an outward change in the way that you behave and the way you present yourself. I always talk about the fact that if you're saved and you've been walking with the Lord, you say for some amount of years, I ought to be able to mark in your life where you have changed things in your life. If you started out with the Lord cussing, at least by year five, you should at least limit the amount of cuss words you've been saying. Come on, let me preach up in here. If you came down the aisle and you gave your life to Christ and you were out there chasing everything that was moving, there ought to be a change by year five where you have settled yourself and now you're chasing after God rather than chasing after flesh. There has to be a change. If you're out there, oh, I'm going to step on a few toes. If you're out there using all kinds of chemical agents in order to change the way you think and feel, and you give your life to Christ, there ought to be somewhat of a change somewhere down the road where you're going to stop relying on that to change your altitude of thought, but rely on the power of God's word to change how you get high. Jesus uses the illustration of the wind. We may not know how the spirit works, but one thing we could do is that we could see the spirit moving and around. We see the spirit moving when a prostitute becomes a missionary. We see the spirit moving when a liar begins to speak the truth of the gospel. We see a spirit moving when a drunkard gets sober and becomes an evangelist. We see the spirit moving when an addict becomes a worshiper of God. When you were in your mess and now find yourself praising God, that's the spirit moving in you. When it used to be you ran away from the church, now you're running to the church every time the door is open. That's the spirit of God working at stuff out of you. We talked about yesterday that we have to put off some stuff so that we can allow the spirit of God to reign in our life. Maybe it's time for you, brothers and sisters, to allow the Holy Spirit to help you to put off some things that is keeping you from right relationship with Christ. And so we have to be born of the spirit finally in order to be born again so that we can see the kingdom of God we must begin by believing in Jesus Christ our Lord look here verse 13 no one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven that is the son of man who is in heaven and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. If we are to receive and benefit from the promise of God, we must believe in his son, Jesus Christ. Again, let me remind us that our flesh cannot save us, our thoughts of how we view ourselves cannot save us. Our good works cannot save us and bring us into the kingdom of God. There is only one person who can save us, and his name is Jesus Christ. Romans 10 and 9 says that if you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, ye shall be saved. Romans 10 and 13, for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 4, 12, neither is salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, and that is the name of Jesus Christ. Philippians 2, 10, and 11, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow to the things in heaven and earth, and uh, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It is only through Jesus, not by any other name, but the name of Jesus that men is saved and can see heaven and eternal life. Muhammad can't save you. Buddha can't save you. All the other worldly religions cannot save you. But our salvation comes through Jesus Christ. I heard a joyful sound. 
Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Spread the tidings. Spread them all around. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. To the utmost, Jesus saves. He will pick you up and turn you around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus saved. It was on a hill called Calvary. He had come down out of glory, walked among men, did great miracles and work and taught about the kingdom of God. But now the time was at hand that he must die for all men, that men who believe on him would be saved. He died on a Friday. Somebody come on, pray with me today. I said, didn't he die? They put nails in his hands and in his feet, a crown of thorns on his head. They had already whipped him until his body just looked uh, disfigured and not like a body anymore. And they hung him high and they stretched him wide. And when he got done with the whole thing, he said, Lord, into thy spirit, I, to thy hands, I commit my spirit. It is finished. I have come and completed the work that you called me to do. He died on Friday. His head locked in the shoulders of his arms, and he gave up the Holy Ghost, and the earth began to shake, and graves began to open, because even in death, the power of God was still being viewed. And he died on a Friday. They took him down from that old rugged cross, laid him in a borrowed tomb, and somebody holler with me if you want to. Early on that third day morning, didn't he get up with all power in his hands? And right now, he sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you. It is only through Jesus Christ. <coughs> that we are saved. Jesus paid it all. And all to him I owe. Sin left the crimson stain. Oh, but didn't he wash it white as snow? Come on, didn't his blood wash it white as snow? Didn't he make a way for you? Didn't he make a way for you? Does he walk with you right now? Ain't he with you right now? And he'll be with you to the end until he comes and cracks the sky so that you can live with him forever. It is only through Jesus Christ that we have salvation. Jesus saves. You must be. You got to be. You have to be born again. You want to see your loved ones who have gone on before you, you have to be born again. If you want to see your Savior face to face, you have to be born again. I look forward to the day when I could sit down and see my Savior, talk with him. Get to know who he truly is. Allow him to open up the mysteries that have not been revealed to us right now and just sit there and just have joy being at the feet of my Savior. But it is only through Jesus Christ you have to be born again. The word of God has been preached this morning. The word of God has been preached this morning. There may be one listening on Facebook or Zoom or in the audience today who thinks just because you have been coming to church that you made it. But let me tell you, if you haven't professed Christ as Lord, truly allowed his spirit to begin making a change in your life, turn from the cares and love of the world to the love of God, you cannot see Jesus. I've already told you that God loves you so much. He loves you that his only son came and died for us. I've already told you that if you want to be born again, you have to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. If you want to have the assurance of the promise of God that you will have eternal life so that you can receive your heavenly inheritance. You have to be born again. It's not just by church membership. Church membership doesn't save you. 
It's not through your tithe. Your tithe can't save you. It's not through all your help of homeless and people in the hospital. Those good works can't save you. You should do them, but you should do them because you have the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. Let me extend the invitation. If there's one who's listening on Facebook or Zoom, you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ today as Lord. You want to be saved. Just write in the chat, salvation. I'll reach out to you, pray with you about your decision. If you're in the sanctuary today, in just a few moments, I'll allow you to come down. If you want to be saved, you want to confess Jesus Christ as Lord, do it today. There may be others who are listening to us here in the sanctuary who want to rededicate their lives back to Christ. What a good day to rededicate. As we come back into the fellowship of believers, maybe throughout this pandemic or even before, you found yourself drifting away from God and from his word. Seems like he's just not present in your life. Maybe there's a separation in your relationship. But let me tell you this, brothers and sisters, God has not left you. The Bible declares that he does not leave us nor forsake us. And even though you may drift away, he's always still there. And all you have to do is just open up your heart and give your life back to him again. Rededicate, recommit. So if there's one today, you want to rededicate your life back to Christ, you want to recommit, all you have to do is write recommit or rededicate in the chat. And here in the sanctuary, in just a few moments, you'll be able to come down and I'll pray with you about your decision. If there's those listening to us, on Facebook or on Zoom who doesn't have a church home. We want to invite you to become part of the First Baptist Church Fellowship. Be a part of this membership. Grow with us. Let me be your pastor. Every believer should have a pastor who prays for them, a church that they can fellowship and worship with. <clears throat> so let, you, let me invite you to the First Baptist Church. <clears throat> if you're out there and you just want prayer, I'm going to pray in just a few moments. Maybe you're going through some difficulties. Maybe you're dealing with sickness. Let me pray with you and for you. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you again for reminding us that in order to see you, we have to be born again. If we are to inherit eternal life, the only way that we can do it is through your son, Jesus Christ. We have to make a profession of our faith and truly believe that God raised him from the dead. And it's only then that we are saved. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us about our salvation. And I pray, God, that this word has touched someone in some way. It causes them to move from an old way to now this new thing. That you allow them right now, God, to do a new thing in them. Lord, if there is one who wants to be saved, all they have to do is pray this simple prayer. We know it. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And I confess my sins. Please, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and be my Lord today. And if they pray that simple prayer with faith, believing, we know that they are saved. Lord, we pray for those who are listening to us who may be going through difficulty and trial. For, Lord, but let me remind them that their hope is in Christ. <clears throat> that no matter how difficult the trial may be, how, how difficult whatever they're going through might be, that they need to keep their eyes focused on that eternal hope. For we know this earth is not our home. For we are all pilgrims and soldiers going through this life. For heaven is our home. But Lord, help us to endure what we have to endure here by keeping a steadfast hope in you. Strengthen them right now, Lord, in this very hour. Heal those who are sick, God, is my prayer. Touch them, Lord. Help them to recover from their sickness and be made whole, if it be your holy will. And again, God, for these who are in the sanctuary today, I thank you for them. I thank you for them, Lord, and I pray for them right now, Lord, that whatever their need is, I know that you're able to meet it that you have all the resources in order to meet their need. Bless them now. Keep them now. Give them peace now. Heal them now. Deliver them now. Whatever they need, God, 
we know that you can provide. It is in the blessed and wonderful name of Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen and amen. Just for a few moments, let me dismiss those who are watching us on Facebook or Zoom. Thank you again for joining with us. Again, if you want to be a part of our membership, just put membership in the chat. If you want to be saved, put salvation. But if that's too difficult for you, just at the uh, right now, you can actually call our church office, 405-769-4363, and leave a message, and I will return that call and get back with you regarding your decision, either for salvation, rededication, membership, or you just need prayer. You can call that number. Also, you can email us at first, first, B-C-H-A, at gmail.com. Send us an email regarding whatever your request may be, and we'll reach back to you first. H-B-C-A, first, rather, it's first Baptist, B-C-H-A, first B-C-H-A at gmail.com. Come on, send us an email, and we'll reach out to you and get back to you. If you want to continue providing financial support to us, you can either mail that support to our church uh, address, 3307 North Post Road, Spencer, Oklahoma, 73084, or you can give online, going to our website, firstbaptistha.org, click on the online giving tab, and it will lead you to the Givelify app. Or if you have the Givelify app already downloaded on your smartphone or tablet, just go to that Givelify app, open it up, look for First Baptist Hicks Edition, and you can support Support our ministry there. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.